So how healthy is your gut? So how can we determine how well your gut is processing your food? A lot of patients will come to see me after they've already had an upper endoscopy, a colonoscopy, and they didn't find anything, but they're still having symptoms. So while these tests are important, they only show the structure, the anatomical structure of your esophagus, stomach, and colon. They don't really tell us if you have SIBO, leaky gut, if there's a bacterial imbalance, if there's an infection with a parasite or yeast, how you're digesting your proteins and fats. So for that, for, to find out all of this information, I use something called a functional gut microbiome test. And I use the GIFX stool profile by Genova Diagnostics. So Genova is a CLIA certified lab. So I find that their results are very, very accurate. And I have looked at a lot of microbiome tests over the years. I've looked at GI map, doctor's data, biome, but I find the Genova one to be the most accurate and the most beneficial for the patient. So the way this test is done is it's done from your stool. So you have to submit your stool and then you mail it out through FedEx. It takes about a month to come back. And it's a very extensive 10 page report on everything related to your gut. So let me walk you through the sections of the test. The first section, it tells us how are you digesting your food? It'll tell me how much protein is in your stool, how much fat in your stool. It'll tell me how your pancreatic enzyme production. So is your pancreas doing a good job? The second section of the test is all the inflammation markers. It'll measure something called calprotectin. Calprotectin is a more serious marker of inflammation in the gut. It's elevated in like colon cancers and in inflammatory bowel disease. It'll measure eosinophil protein X, which is seen in parasites or food allergies. And then it measures fecal secretory IgA, which is a more nonspecific marker of inflammation. It could be seen from stress or the foods you're eating or from ibuprofen. It'll also measure the zonulin, the test for leaky gut. So the next section of the test is looking at your microbiome. So they measure something called short chain fatty acids. So when you eat fiber in your diet, your, the bacteria break it down into short chain fatty acids. So that's something that they'll measure and tell me if your diet needs supplemental fiber. P having the low short chain fatty acids has been associated with a lot of health issues. And I see that a lot of people struggling with their weight seem to have very low short chain fatty acids. So we'll give these patients a lot of fiber supplements and we'll reboot their microbiome. It also tests something called beta-glucuronidase. Beta-glucuronidase is such an interesting marker. It's something that'll recycle estrogens and toxins from your gut. And the fascinating thing is that I see high beta-glucuronidase in patients who have issues with high estrogen levels or estrogen symptoms in their body. For example, they may have breast cysts or thyroid nodules, or endometriosis, or fibroids, or even breast cancer survivors. I see high beta-glucuronidase. The amazing thing is this can be blocked with something called calcium deglucurate. And what's so remarkable to me is I've seen many women who have struggled with breast pain for years. And for the first time ever, after giving them calcium deglucurate, their breast pain is completely gone because we have blocked the toxic estrogen recycling from their gut. So the next section of the test is looking at your entire bacterial profile. So they'll measure out all the bacteria. And the nice thing is they have data from research showing that certain bacteria are associated with certain diseases so that we can improve that. Then, then they have two pages of parasite analysis, so looking for all the very subtle parasites that can be missed on standard tests. It'll look for H. pylori, which is the bacteria that causes stomach ulcers and stomach cancers. And then it'll look for any overabundance of any normal commensal bacteria that may be causing your symptoms. And then finally, there's a fungal culture section. So if there's overgrowth of candida or other yeast, that'll also come up on the report. So based on these results, I'm then able to guide patients with specific protocols targeting their active gut issues. And the amazing thing is once we heal their gut issues, 
patients have such a significant improvement, not just in their gut symptoms, but in their overall health. You know, autoimmune disease, brain fog, joint pains, mood issues, hormonal issues, they all improve. And then six months to a year later, we could always repeat the test if we want to see the progress that we're making.